assalamu alaikum dear students or oh, welcome to nuclear physics lecture uh, i'm dr proez ahmed uh, in this particular lecture uh, we will talk about uh, liquid drop model so this is a long lecture um, uh, that's why we have divided this lecture into uh, three different parts uh, so uh, let's come towards uh, the first part of the lecture a liquid drop model so what is a liquid drop model and how it deals uh, to explain the structure of the nucleus and the behavior of the nucleus inside the nucleus. So uh, this model uh, treat the nucleus uh, as a dense, incompressible, uh, spherical liquid drop. Uh, proposed, uh, this model was proposed by uh, George Gamow and developed by Neil Bohr and John Hahn at Quebec, Wheeler during 1930s. I mean, these are the people who develop, uh, I mean, who propose this model and later on to uh, develop this model. Uh, the overall process has been done in, uh, uh, during 1930s. So uh, the fluid uh, in this model, the fluid is made up, uh, the nucleons are held together by uh, the strong nuclear force. And I think so all of you people now explore, uh, uh, that's what, what's mean by the strong nuclear force. So, uh, uh, the model that does not explain all the properties of the nucleus, uh, I mean, this, this, this model, uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, it, it's the model that does not explain all the properties of the nucleus, but, but uh, does explain the spherical shape of most nuclei. You know that, uh, I mean, at the start of nuclear physics lectures, uh, we were discussed that majority of the nuclei, uh, they, they are being spherical in shape. Uh, even if they are, they, they are in spherical in shape, but uh, we assume that they are spherical in shape. Uh, so, I mean, so the success of this model is uh, that is explain the spherical shape of the most nuclei. Uh, along with that, uh, it's also helped to predict the binding energy of the nucleus. I mean, this is the, uh, the main success, uh, the key point of success for the liquid drop models, that it helps to predict the binding energy of the uh, nucleus. Along with that, uh, this model uh, gives a good account of the average behavior of the uh, nuclei. Uh, that is, uh, some of the nuclei uh, are usually stable uh, and uh, having a magic number, that is a particular value of, um, of protons or, or the neutrons. I mean, this, this, this is the concept. Uh, these are the concepts that we get from the liquid drop models. That is, according to these models, uh, we, we have the knowledge uh, or we understand that some of the models, they are unusually stable. Uh, and so the stability, they are being nominated, uh, they are being under, understood by the concept of the magic number. So what is the magic numbers? Uh, we will discuss them in details later on in uh, these lectures. Uh, but uh, for time being, it's been a particular value of the uh, protons or particular values of the uh, neutrons. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, that particular values of the protons or neutrons is uh, equal to, uh, or it can be uh, 2, 8, uh, 20, 28, uh, 50, uh, 82, and 126. I mean, these are the numbers, these are the particular number of the protons or the neutron. If a nucleus uh, have it, so then they, that kind of nucleus or those nucleus, they are considered as unusually uh, stable nucleus. We will discuss later on in full details uh, about the uh, magic number, the, the full concept of the magic number that will be discussed uh, later on. So the mass of an atomic nucleus uh, is given by the formula uh, that is, uh, you can see it here. Uh, this is the formula which represents uh, the mass of an atomic nucleus uh, and it is given by uh, that uh, that is uh, the mass of the atomic nucleus is equal to uh, the total mass of the protons uh, that is we have and uh, that particular nucleus plus uh, the total mass of the neutrons uh, minus uh, the total binding energy divided by uh, the c square i mean this is the uh, the uh, the formula uh, I mean that this how uh, I mean we can calculate or we can get the mass of uh, atomic nucleus so uh, in this formula here uh, just like you can see it here I mean it's denoted with the subscript P and N 
So this subscript P and ends are basically for the rest mass of the protons and the neutron respectively. Whereas uh, EB is the binding energy uh, of the nucleus. Uh, so what actually we have, it is assumed that the total binding energy of the nuclei has contributions from uh, various factors. I mean, it's, uh, just like uh, you know that uh, we have protons, we have neutrons, and they are being picked. I mean, these are the particles, they are being picked by strong equal force inside the nucleus, and they have their respective binding energy. So, there, there are, I mean, different factors on which the total binding energy of the nuclei uh, depend on. So, now uh, we will discuss about those factors uh, which basically affect the binding energy of the nuclei. So, um, uh, these factor are uh, let comes to the first factor on which the binding energy depend and that is called the volume uh, the volume energy uh, so uh, what we have in volume energy so you know that when an assembly of the nucleus is packed together and a smallest volume so there uh, I mean almost uh, each and every one of you know that uh, each nucleus has a certain number of other nucleus and contact with that. I mean, you know that when we have a nucleus inside that particular nucleus, we have a certain number of the neutrons and some number of the protons, and they are being big and a close or a smallest uh, volume. So what we have when we have this packing, uh, so uh, this nuclear binding energy uh, is responsible for the bound state of the nucleus should be proportioned to uh, the volume. I mean, uh, first we have different number of uh, uh, nucleons, and these nucleons they are being bounded in a smallest uh, volume by a particular amount of the binding energy. So, in the second point, we are saying that uh, this nuclear binding energy, which binds the nucleus in a smaller volume, is basically responsible for the bound state of the nucleus and it should be proportioned to the volume. I mean, the binding energy should be proportioned to the volume. The smaller the volume we have, the smaller the binding energy will be. If the nucleus is larger, the volume is larger, so we will need a larger amount of the binding energy. That's what we mean in the uh, simple war. So uh, the basis, uh, the basis for this term is the strong nuclear force. Uh, what it means? It means that uh, the strong force affect both the proton and the neutrons uh, equally. And the number of pair of protons and and neutron uh, that can be formed uh, from all the particles. I mean that collectively we call uh, the atomic mass. Uh, so this this is also the, the key concept that uh, the strong nuclear force uh, is equally effective on all the particles within a particular uh, volume. So the the volume uh, the volume of the nucleus is proportions to uh, the atomic mass. So uh, this term uh, that is a positive a with a subscript v and a that is the mass number is known as uh, the volume term. Oh, let me repeat it again. And that is uh, the volume of the nucleus is proportional to the atomic mass. I mean a here for the atomic mass. So uh, the term that is positive. A with the subscript V time the capital A, A is for uh, atomic mass is known as uh, the volume term. So just like you can see it here in the uh, this particular figure, here you can see that uh, when we have a nucleus inside the nucleus, if you assume that a nucleus is spherical in shape, uh, so we have this volume. In this particular volume, you can see that how the nearest neighbor that can interact with each other. So uh, the volume term uh, in, uh, in a particular volumes, uh, uh, we have the A, I mean, if we have a nuclei, uh, I mean, we take the example of a particular kind of the nuclei, uh, and we're saying that at that particular nuclei, uh, with a mass number uh, A greater or equal to 30, so the binding energy for the nuclei, it will be assumed to be a constant. I mean, this is, this is some kind of, uh, I mean, example we are taking. That if we are assuming a nucleus, 
uh, with a uh, total number of the nucleons uh, that is equal or greater than 30 so the binding energy for nucleon will be constant for such a nucleus and uh, the volumes will be proportioned to uh, rq uh, what it mean it mean that it will be proportioned to the total number of the nucleon so the binding energy uh, term for uh, the volume or we can say that the volume term that we denote it uh, uh, by b with a subscript v b for the binding energy v for the volume term uh, will be equal to a v uh, n to uh, a and if we put the values uh, so we will the, the values uh, it should be equal to uh, approximately equal to 8 mega electron watts uh, what it mean it mean that and nucleons attract its closest neighbor i mean just like you can see it here in this particular diagram that this nucleus these two nucleus they attract each other just like that these two nuclei they can attract each other and this is the main or the key characteristic of the strong uh, nuclear force uh, which we have discussed last time in, in the previous lectures uh, that is is only a pratio between the uh, the closest uh, neighbor so this this is the key point we are explaining it again here that it's been attractive or nucleus attracts uh, its closest uh, neighbor uh, then we have uh, the contribution to the binding energy uh, from the surface of the atom uh, so in that contact uh, so in that context we uh, define the surface energy term for the total binding energy uh, so uh, just like you can see it here uh, in this particular uh, diagram according to that a nucleon uh, at the surface of the nucleus attracts uh, with few other nucleons uh, than one in the interior of the nucleus and had its binding energy is less binding energy is less why it's less because here you can see it by yourself that's being in contact with the uh, with the fewer atom just uh, means uh, unlike the volume uh, where we have the interior atoms and those atoms they are in contact with the more atom so in this particular case uh, we are saying that the burning energy is uh, less what more we have so uh, uh, this surface energy term takes that uh, into account and is therefore negative and is proportion to uh, the surface area so it should be remember uh, let me uh, repeat it again uh, this surface energy term uh, take that into account Take, take what into account take that into account that less surface atom that at the surface less number of atom they are in contact so its binding energy is less so this particular term is taken into account and is therefore uh, the surface energy uh, this why we say that the surface energy term uh, is negative and is proportional to uh, the surface area uh, this terms uh, is also based on the strong force uh, is a correction to the volume term i mean so here you can see that i mean if we say the nucleus is uh, spherical in shape so here these surface atoms uh, i mean uh, they have the forces uh, from the interior they have the forces from the interior atom rightly from the side but uh, um, the, the side which is uh, I mean it's uh, outer from the central part I mean here this this particular portion of your meaning I mean it's not acting uh, uh, since there there is no atom no no nucleus uh, at this particular point so there is no force uh, from that perspective or from that particular directions so that's why we're taking that this term is also based on the strong nuclear force because uh, these nucleus uh, they are very close and they can experience the strong nuclear force but at the same time we're saying that it's a correction to the volume terms a wise correction to the volume term because in volume terms i were saying that we were considering the example of the uh, particular volumes uh, but here uh, i mean we don't have the capability at that particular case to account for uh, the force which being exerted uh, on the particles from the outside or with the, the surface uh, interactions uh, from the outside so if the volume uh, at the volume of the nucleus is proportions to uh, the atomic mass that is the total number of nucleus then the radiance should be proportions to rs to power 1 by 3 and the surface area to uh, rs to power uh, 2 by 3 because we know that surface area has uh, uh, 
let's get the area the unit of area is um, a square so uh, what we have a nucleus uh, near the surface has a few neighbors uh, that I mean everybody of you know and just like you can see it here for, for uh, yourself there is a nucleus uh, near the surface has pure neighbor uh, unlike the volume I mean if we take the interior atoms so here we can consider with respect to volume so this particular atom it will be contact uh, at the same time with the six uh, nearest neighbor so unlike that if we take an example uh, of the surface atom so it can be in contact only with the three atoms so this is the fact we are mentioning here that a nuclein uh, near the surface has pure, uh, pure neighbor so as uh, uh, the nucleus uh, I mean the number of nucleus uh, goes up I mean increases so the surface area increases so the number of surface nucleus also increases that is uh, goes up so need to uh, reduce the binding energy I mean this fact need to uh, reduce the binding energy uh, so according to the analysis uh, the area is proportional to the R square that is the radius uh, and that means that proportion to uh, a raised to the power 2 by 3 here a is the total number of the nucleons so the binding uh, surface energy are uh, the surface factor uh, to the binding energy is equal to uh, minus a with the subscript s as for the uh, uh, for the surface uh, a, a raised to the power 2 by 3 and this is we call uh, the surface term is negative why is negative because uh, we have discussed it uh, I mean, we have discussed the reason in the lecture that why it's negative. So that's all for this lecture. With more details, uh, we will come shortly uh, with the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.